जनरल साइंस स्टैंडर्ड सिक्स चैप्टर सिक्स सब्सटेंसेस इन डेली यूज कैन यू रिकॉल विच थ्री ऑब्जेक्ट्स डू यू सी इन द पिक्चर हाउ डिड यू आइडेंटिफाई देम वॉट मटीरियल आर दे मेड ऑफ कैन एनी वन ऑफ दीज मटीरियल्स बी यूज टू मेक ऑल द थ्री ऑब्जेक्ट्स substances and objects all substances are made up of very small particles objects are made up of substances objects have a specific shape their parts have a specific arrangement by which we identify them we use wood plastic or steel to make a table chair or cupboard these substances have the strength required to make these articles also these substances can be given a desired shape it means that we consider the properties of substances to use them for making things the same substance or material can be used to make many objects let us study some such examples cotton cloth fiber or thread sarees handkerchiefs quilts mattresses pillows etc iron construction steel bars griddles tawa parts of automobiles electric poles tables cupboards etc aluminium kitchen utensils electrical cables etc by studying the properties of substances we can select substances suitable for our purposes the substances in everyday use are of two main kinds natural and man made substances natural substances substances available in nature are called natural substances of these the substances of the first group are obtained from living things substances obtained from living things are called biotic substances air soil water are substances that are not obtained from living things they are called abiotic substances leather and wool are obtained from animals they are of animal origin whereas jute and cotton are substances of plant origin man made substances it is human nature to strive for newer things and to try to make life more comfortable as a result of his efforts man not only learned to use natural substances but also began to process them to make new substances several such substances are easier to use and can be made available in plenty at a low cost therefore these substances came to be used on a large scale there are a great many such man made substances in use today new substances produced by processing naturally available substances are called man made substances earlier earlies or capes made of grass or sackcloth were used for protection from rain then cloth umbrellas came into use nowadays the rain coat school bags and the book covers you use 
can all be made from plastic delicate articles perishable fruits etc require packing to pack tv sets refrigerators etc big cartons and thermocol are being used all these are man made substances these substances are waterproof or water resistant lightweight and easy to transport that is why they are being used increasingly glass can be made from sand and calcium carbonate however sand and calcium carbonate cannot be obtained again from glass you must have observed green chilies or tomatoes turning red after some time have you ever seen or heard of red tomatoes becoming green again no while making man made substances the properties of the constituents undergo a change this change occurs due to certain chemical reactions these changes in the properties are permanent that is the original constituent substances cannot be obtained again from the new substances such changes are called irreversible changes production of substances rubber rubber is of two types natural and artificial natural rubber is obtained from the gum or sap of trees this sap is called latex rubber has a peculiar odor and it is white in color odor means smell vulcanization of rubber in this process rubber is heated with sulfur for 3 to 4 hours to give hardness to the rubber sulfur is mixed in it the proportion of sulfur in the mixture is determined by the purpose for which the rubber will be used erasers rubber balls rubber toys all have varying proportions of sulfur in them in rubber bands the proportion of sulfur is very small in the past charles goodyear spilled a mixture of rubber and sulfur on a burning stove after the stove was extinguished he noticed that the rubber had become harder and less elastic he repeated this experiment in a systematic way and invented the process of vulcanization hard and tough tires of rubber made thenceforth brought about a revolutionary change in transportation do you know rubber is a natural substance obtained by collecting the latex of a certain tree rubber trees are found in abundance in brazil later these trees were planted in other countries too the botanical name of this tree is hevia brasiliensis in india the maximum production of rubber is in kerala paper paper is the substance or material formed due to the intertwining of the cellulose fibers in grass wood rags or waste paper thus paper is a kind of network of cellulose fibers how is paper made coniferous trees like pine are used to make paper the bark of the logs of these trees 
is first removed and the wood is broken into small pieces. The mixture of these pieces and some chemicals is kept soaking for a long time. It helps to form pulp. When the chemical process is completed, the fibrous substances from wood pulp are separated and some dyes are added. The pulp is then passed through rollers, dried to form paper and finally wound on reels. Paper and wood are closely related. To save trees, it is necessary to use paper sparingly. Always, always remember, do not tear up blank pages of a notebook. Do not throw away old notebooks with blank pages. The blank sides of advertising pamphlets, inner sides of postal envelopes, the blank sides of calendars, pages and other such writable surfaces can be used to make notes, lists, to cover books, etc. Do not throw away or burn up such paper until it has been fully utilized like this. Whenever possible, try to use a pencil and slate. Cooperate with people who collect paper from garbage or buy scrap paper. These people help in the proper recycling of resources. Do you know, in India, the first factory to manufacture newsprint paper to be used for newspapers was established at Nepanagar in Madhya Pradesh in 1955. Paper is also manufactured at Sungard in Gujarat. In Maharashtra, there is a paper factory at Balarpur near Chandrapur. Advantages and Shortcomings of Synthetic Fiber Shortcomings means disadvantages. Advantages These fibers can be manufactured on a mass scale. Mass scale means large scale. They cost less. They are strong and durable. They can be used for a long time. They are water repellent, hence do not rot or get wet. They dry easily. They are lightweight and comfortable to wear. As they have a shine, they enhance the appearance of the wearer. Clothes made from these threads are wrinkle-free and scratch-free. Shortcomings They are water-repellent, hence do not absorb sweat from the skin. Continuous use of clothes made from these threads keep the skin moist, which may cause skin diseases. Synthetic clothes are uncomfortable to wear, especially in summer. Synthetic fabric catches fire easily. If they catch fire, the cloth sticks to the skin and causes serious injuries. These fibers are not decomposed by microorganisms. Always remember, save trees to save nature, save paper to save trees, use paper properly and economically, make full use of it and recycle the used paper. Although there are some disadvantages in using synthetic fibers, they can be useful if they are used in the proper way. They reduce 
the load on the use of natural resources what we have learnt we use two types of materials natural and man made natural materials may be biotic or abiotic biotic materials are either of plant origin or animal origin rubber paper and synthetic fibers are important man made materials in our daily use man made materials are obtained by using certain processes science watch while studying science we do verify whatever we learn but what about others it is necessary to explain to everybody that there is science behind every phenomenon let us explain to them what we have learnt and let us act on the basis of our knowledge synthetic fibers or threads can you tell from which substances in nature can we get threads or fiber what are clothes made from from the time it was first thought that artificial yarn could be produced to meet the clothing needs of an increasing population much research and progress has taken place in this field innumerable kinds of synthetic or artificial threads are now available nylon decron terylen terene polyester rayon are the names of various synthetic threads almost all the articles made from natural fibers in the olden days can now be made from synthetic threads nylon rayon terylen acrylic are all synthetic threads and many articles in our daily use are made from them nylon these threads were invented at the same time in new york and london therefore the initials ny of new york and lon from london were combined to name them nylon nylon threads have a shine and are strong transparent and water resistant they are used to manufacture clothes fishing nets ropes etc rayon cotton and wood pulp is dissolved in a chemical called sodium hydroxide to make a solution threads are obtained from this solution with the help of machines as these threads have shine and strength they are said to be synthetic silk they appear to be shining bright like the sun's rays hence they were named rayon decron terylen terene various hydrocarbons obtained from mineral oils are used to make polymer chains a solution of such a polymer is pressed through a strainer with fine holes the fibers formed after cooling are long and unbroken threads these threads are twisted to obtain yarn different types of chemicals are used to make threads of various properties these different threads have been named variously as decron terylen terene etc new words hydrocarbons substances obtained from mineral oil 
polymer chains long continuous chains formed by small interlinked interlinked chemical units do you know silk is a natural thread of fiber obtained from the cocoons of silk worms from one cocoon 500 meters to 1300 meters of thread can be obtained it is said that silk was first produced on a large scale in china